Hey folks, Boogs here, back with another Armor Brief video. Today I'll be talking about a brand new addition to the game, in the form of the AAV P7 A1 Amphibious Assault Vehicle. This was added recently, along with the United States Marine Corps faction, and a few other vehicles as part of the recent version 3 update. Before we get started, just wanted to thank people for the views, likes and comments on the last video, but enough of that, let's jump straight into it. The Amphibious Assault Vehicle, AAV, is a fully tracked amphibious landing vehicle manufactured by United States Combat Systems. The AAV P7 A1 is the current amphibious troop transport of the United States Marine Corps. It is used by USMC Amphibious Assault Battalions to land the surface assault elements of the landing force and their equipment in a single lift from the assault ship during amphibious operation. The vehicle can also move troops to inland objectives conduct mechanized operations and perform combat support in subsequent mechanized operations ashore. Marines call them Amtraks for short, which is just a nickname of their original designation Amphibious Tractor. The LVTP-7 was first introduced in 1972 as a replacement for the LVTP-5. In 1982, FMC was contracted to conduct the LVTP-7 Life Extension Program which converted the LVT-7 vehicles to the improved AAV-7A1 vehicle. This was done by adding an improved engine, transmission and weapon system and improving the overall maintainability of the vehicle. The Cummins VT-400 diesel engine was replaced by the General Motors 8V-53T and this was driven through FMC's HS-400 3A1 transmission. The hydraulic traverse and elevation of the weapon was replaced by electric motors which eliminated the danger from hydraulic fluid flyers. The suspension and shock absorbers were strengthened as well. The fuel tank was made safer and a fuel burn smoke generator system was added. Eight smoke grenade launchers were also placed around the armament station. The headlight clusters were housed in square recess instead of the earlier round type. The driver was provided with an improved instrumental panel and night vision device and a new ventilation system. These upgraded vehicles were originally called LVT-7A1, but the Marine Corps renamed the LVTP-7A1 to AAV-7A1 in 1984. Another improvement was added starting in 1987 in the form of a Cadillac Gauge Weapon Station, or Up Gunned Weapon Station, UGWS, which was armed with both a 50 caliber M2HB machine gun and a Mark 19 40mm grenade launcher. The Amtrak has seen some combat during its service history, such as the 1982 invasion of the Falkland Islands, it's seen combat in Lebanon, and it's seen combat in the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Let's not also forget the Gulf War and a few others. Right, with that done, let's take a look at the seats and in-game details you're likely to experience when playing this vehicle. The first I will mention is the driver. This seat, as with other APCs, requires the use of a crewman kit, the vehicle is quite quick off the line, reaching its top speed of 75 km an hour in a short time. Note though, this top speed is only on roads, and realistically, you're going to see just over 40 km an hour off road. As I said before in a previous video, this vehicle can swim. The speed on water though is limited to just 13 km an hour, and as expected, driving in water severely hinders your mobility. So, you have to think twice before going for a swim. Overall, the driver has at their control a very strong vehicle. It is similar in many respects to the British Bulldog APC, in the sense that it is 2000 HP, meaning that it can take multiple ATs before finally going down. Armour-wise, the AAV 7P A1 has almost full 12.7mm protection. Not only that, it is able to take up to three armour-piercing shots from an MBT before going down. This means that it is an excellent vehicle to use as close infantry support. Now the interesting thing about the gunner's seat is the use of the 50 caliber and 40 mm Mark 19 grenade launcher in tandem. This ensures that the gunner has plenty of ammunition to choose from, since the 50 cal has 500 round boxes and the Mark 19 has 5 50 round belts. This further adds to the purpose of the vehicle as simply an armoured transport. The 50 caliber allows it to at least pose some danger to other APCs or IFVs but the 40mm grenade launcher gives it the opportunity to indirectly kill infantry with its splash radius. This further reduces the amount of 50 cal ammo that it has to use to kill infantry. The gunner should also note that both guns are not stabilised. 
It takes up to 8 seconds to rotate the turret 360 degrees, and each belt takes 10 seconds to reload. Interestingly, this is the first vehicle in-game that uses four sets of smoke launchers as concealment instead of the standardized two. Now in-game, we can only see up to eight troops plus two crew, making a total of 10 players at once. This means you can't comfortably fit a squad in the vehicle unless that squad is designated as a mechanized infantry unit, which typically has a full squad of nine and has two dedicated crewmen. Although from experience, this is not the ideal way to play since you are limiting said vehicle to a certain squad instead of giving it more freedom to help support other squads where it's needed. Another couple of points, like other American IFVs and APCs, the troops exit from the rear of the vehicle, giving them better protection when dismounting. Also, the vehicle can carry 1200 build supplies, meaning that it is the first APC in the game that has this feature. This is ideal when trying to place a forward operating base in a heavily contested area. So let's wrap this up and I'll present my thoughts on the vehicle. Overall, this is an interesting new addition to squad. It is excellent armor for an APC, meaning that it is an acceptable survivability. This also adds to its ability to provide close infantry support. Adding to this, the fact that it can carry supplies makes this vehicle exceptional for assault operations. However, it lacks the armament to go toe to go against other IFVs since it only carries a 12.7mm for its anti-armor needs. So taking all this into account, the vehicle should be used, as mentioned before, as a close infantry support APC. This role plays to its strengths. However, its main weakness, anti-vehicle combat, can be solved by nearby friendly ATs or friendly ATs that are carried in the vehicle. Overall, this vehicle is a nice refreshing addition to the game, where a well-coordinated team can take full advantage of its abilities and play it to its strengths. And with that, I think we're done. Thank you all for watching folks, as always, drop us a like if you enjoyed the video, comment with your opinions and your experiences, and if you want to be kept up to date with when we're playing or uploading, consider subscribing to our channel or join our discord. At present, we are still not open to new member applications, but this will change in the coming weeks and you will be notified when this does change. Thanks again folks, Books out.